Alright lovers, alright Bush, how's it going? Armour Pants here, got another video for you, don't I? Uh, so this one here now is, uh, yeah, firstly just uh, salutations for me, 07. As always, I'd like to show you this absolutely fantastic and beautiful um, aeroplane, which I find is fascinating, isn't it? So yeah, so by the way, I do apologise for, uh, if I'm a bit off today, I fell on my arse yesterday and hurt me, me, my tailbone, which is the, the coccyx. By the way, I always remember it's called the coccyx because when I was trying to remember when I was in biology, um, I just saw that movie Deliverance. So then I had this handy reminder, coccyx, where the cock sticks. So there you go. By the way, these are just two uh, World, of Bla the World of Tank Blitz assets that I've started supporting and I've used quite well. I've started supporting them. Uh, well, actually, Blitz Stars have supported for quite a while. Blitz Hanger just started being a patron there. Uh, fantastic um, assets to use if you're, if you're into Blitz. Um, Blitz Stars obviously gives individual stats and stuff like that. And Blitz Hanger gives you all the information you need to know about tanks, updates, everything. It's fantastic. Uh, the, the guys are doing a great job there, so if you can support them, do so. By the way, I'm also an amateur historian. I don't know if you know that. I'm sure how the fuck would you know that? And uh, I do a page on uh, Facebook called Napoleon's Notebook. So if you're not just interested in tanks but interested in military history, um, I'd uh, go along and like that if you don't mind. That's a bit of shameless promotion, cross-promotion, but sure, fuck it. Why not? I don't get paid for doing any of this, so why not? All right, so anyway, this game. By the way, talking about handy reminders, um, when I was like kind of thinking about handy reminders, I also had one for Remember the Colors of the Rainbow. It was Roy from Great Bitten on an IV. Roy GB IV. You might think, hold on a second, Armored. That's a fucking very weird thing to associate with Rainbow. But I'll tell you the context of it, right? At the time, I was thinking about it. My brother was working, he was working with a student in the summers in the Canary Islands there in some money. He was working as a barman one night, right? And um, this English guy got thrown out of a bar and he started fighting with one of the bouncers, right? Or the actual, the only bouncer there. Next thing, these cops turn, come, uh, turn up, right? The old Guardia Civil. And uh, they just start bailing into this guy with the bouncers, right? And they whap out the truncheons and they're ripping this guy left, right, centre, right? And they beat him so severely, he ended up wearing nothing but his pants and a sock. So, uh, obviously they left him there in a bloody fucking heap. Uh, and just in his pants. By the way, they weren't armoured pants, I can tell you that. And uh, he had to go to hospital. And um, so ever since then I was kind of thinking about it. He was just like a short, stocky, you know, shaved head, tattooed, sort of English football hooligan type. So uh, I always think of that to him, you know, Roy from Great Bitten and uh, Intravenous in the hospital. Because that poor lad was hospitalised. So there you go. Um, probably kind of think that's not a very nice kind of thing to say, isn't it? But, I mean, you can laugh at it, because it's not you, is it? Yeah. Probably deserved anyway, didn't he? So, I don't even know, I'm not even nothing not based on that in anything, but um, poor lad. But there you go, if you want to remember the colours of the rainbow, Roy from Great Bitten and an IV, Roy GB IV. So there you go. You're never going to forget them again, are you? By the way, ever since then, we said my brother have a phrase, beaten to his pants. Because, I mean, I didn't think it was possible to be beaten to your pants, but this poor fellow was, so there you go. And hospitalised to boo. So there you go, beaten to your pants, Roy GB IV. Um, anyway, sorry, I better get back to this game, right? So, uh, this T25, right? T25 is the uh, Tier 5 premium tank, German tank. Although, actuality, it's Czech. Um, it was developed, it was never actually made into tank, it was only ever on blueprints, but it was made by uh, Skoda Works um, in Bohemia. And by the way, I don't know if you know this, but one of the reasons that Hitler invaded Czechoslovakia wasn't just because of the state in Germans, that was his excuse, but he wanted access to the economy and particularly the armaments manufacturing. In 1938, Czechoslovakia had the fifth largest economy on the planet. Just think about that. So, and in fact, a lot of the tanks that they used to invade um, Poland, then France, and even the USSR were actually Czech tanks that were renamed um, to give German names. So there you go. Apparently the chassis and the guns on them were fantastic. And the gun and the chassis in this tank is amazing. Now this is unusual, it's sort of a bit of a paradox of a medium tank. It is. It's really fast, gets around the battlefield really well, it has a fantastic gun, it's really accurate, does good damage, good rate of fire, but it's not manoeuvrable if you get into a brawl situation. Uh, it's traverse speed is terrible. Also, it's speed from st stop start is, isn't great either. So, um, but it is a fantastic tank, and you'll see here that not only do I get a mastery badge in this game, we also get a Kolobinov. Because this Tail T34 here, honestly, I don't know what the fuck he was doing. I don't think he was doing anything really, he just... Well, I'll tell you what he was doing, he was a shell magnet for me, so that fucking helped a lot, I can tell you. Because these lads were just fucking uh, firing at him, so while he was doing any damage, he was a bit of a shell magnet for him. He was a human fucking shield, wasn't he? So fair play to him, he did, uh, took one for the team there. 
So you see there, um, we're being called noobs and all that, but in the end, we did pretty well and got mastery of them. Um, if you're wondering what my tactics were there on the club enough, I decided I need to get, I wanted to get them all down to one shot, so that's why I did a bit of hit point trade with the stoke just to get them down. Then I had them all in one shot and then I knew we could do it, so that was the reason behind that. Uh, the T25 is a fantastic tank, I love playing I have to say. Once you're aware of the fact that it isn't uh, maneuverable in a brawl situation, this traverse is terrible. But it does get around the map really well and the gun is fantastic as you saw there, I mean the amount of shots I put in. But anyway, in that game, the old VK there, uh, the 30 one h was kind of, he gave me a lucky player, I don't know why. Um, because one of the way, one of the things you do, there, yeah, there, a lucky player, I don't know why. Um, one of the things that you can do with this tank is, uh, it's, uh, body armor is not fantastic, but it's whole, it's turret armor is fantastic. So what he did was, I went hold down there, so he was actually bouncing shots off me. So if we just look at there at the yellow club enough, um, I think this is where the game sort of won here after I take him out. I bounced a couple of shots off him, bounced him off my turret beforehand. And then here, as I said, what I decided to do is just fuck it. I just need to get this uh, stuck down to one shot. I um, conserved my hit points uh, very well, so I had full hit points. So I get into a bit of a hit point trade with him. There you go. Now he's one shot, they're all one shots. And then it's easy squeezy, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, winner, winner, chicken dinner. As I said, my old shell magnet there pops out and takes another one for me. And then easy with pretty easy, uh, pretty easy uh, club enough. Particularly when you've got a gun like this, you know, you can rely on 100% of the time, you know. It's not like even uh, your kids are the junkie, you can definitely rely on it. And well, it's going to turn out well, which obviously if you left your kids with a junkie, you probably wouldn't. Um, but there you go, let's just have a look at full speed. It was pretty fast, Kalabanov as well. Um, I just did a fight just with my main target just to get him down. Once he was on one shot then, um, it was pretty easy. And my friendly shell magnet there took one for me too, helped me out a bit. And I don't know why the Leo didn't push on, maybe he's on the re re reload, I'm not really sure what he was doing, but anyway, he made it pretty easy for me in the end. By the way, I don't know if you know who this beautiful woman is. This is uh, Teresa Maxfer, who is one of the top Czech models. And she is a very, very successful model. She's also a fantastic person, raises a lot of money for charity, and I was lucky enough to meet her once. Uh, but she does have a rather large nose, which is unusual for such a for such a successful model. And that's like the T25, it does have kind of, um, it is beautiful, fantastic, but it does, because it has a forward-facing turret, it does have a kind of a, an elongated kind of nose, uh, snout on it, so it kind of looks like Therese Maxwell. It is beautiful, fantastic. It's a pleasure to, to I was going to say drive, but obviously you don't drive a supermodel. But yeah, so there you go. So that's the end of it. I hope you've enjoyed it. Cheers, Mush, and all that. And uh, have a good one. And follow us on Facebook and Twitter and all that shit. And uh, yeah, maybe follow Trey's and Max of it too. Yeah, you couldn't go wrong. Just a lot worse. Alright, cheers. See you now. Take it easy, boys, boys.